Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to Daily Code Buffer. In this video, we are going to learn about what is dynamic insert and dynamic update, why we should use it and what are the pros and cons about it. This is available in Spring Data JPA. So let's see how we can use it, when to use it and what are the advantages. Let me just take the simple example over here that this is my Spring Boot application over here and this Spring Boot application have one API and that API is responsible to add some data to the database and we have a MySQL database as well available. Okay. So if I show you here, okay, you can see that I have a student controller and this student controller has the request mapping as slash students. And whenever we will do post mapping on this slash students, we will call the is add student API. And for that add student API, we have the student service and with this student service, there is a repository. And with this student repository, we will try to save the data, okay, into our database. And this is our entity where you can see that we have ID, first name, last name, email and department to store for our database. And what we have done is if you go to the application.properties file, what I have done is I have added the data source URL for my database here. And I have also added the spring JPA show SQL equals to true. So that means whenever there is an any database operation, those queries will be printed in the logs. And I have also added a property to format it as well. So whenever there is an operation, those queries will be printed and we will see how JPA will change those queries based on the different data that we provided. Okay. So currently you can see that my application is running and what we will do is we'll go to the MySQL. Okay. And here you can see that we have the database. Let me just log in here. And if I just run this query, you can see that I have a table and I have some data also available. Okay. And what I will do is I will also go to the postman and from here I'll be trying to hit the data. So this is the post request to localhost 8080 students. And what I'll do is I'll go to the body. Okay. And what I'll do, I'll just pass first name as Shabir, last name as Daudi, email as Shabir at gmail.com and department I'll just add as IT department. Okay. So for this, what I'll do, I'll just try to hit send and you can see that the data is saved here and we got the data back as well. So for this, if we try to see the logs here, okay. Currently you can see that this is the logs. You can see this was the insert statement, insert in the student. It saved department, email, first name, last name and ID. All those values are being inserted. Okay. Now for the same thing, what I will do is now I don't want department. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll just save department as null here. And what I will do is I'll just change the name. This is nickel Gupta nickel at gmail.com. Okay. Now I will try to save the data, but note here that we do not have the department. I'm not trying to save the department. Okay. So for this, I'll just hit the send button and you can see the data is saved. I'm getting department as null. And if I see the query, Okay, you can see this was the previous query and this is the new query. So for the, this new query as well, you can see that I am getting the department, right? So I have not passed the department, department is null, but still it is trying to store the department as null. If I see the MySQL here and if I hit the query again, you can see that for nickel department is null. Okay, so that means whenever I'm passing null at that time also JPA is adding those properties while generating the queries. Now why? this will happen. So what happens is for every entity that we define, right? So here I have defined the student entity. So what JPA will do is for every entities, JPA will create the insert and update queries at the time of starting the application. So at the time of application startup, all those queries will be created and the same queries will be used to create and update the data for all the data that we pass. Okay. So what will happen is those queries are already created. So we do not have any overhead time to create those queries. Whatever data we pass, those data directly will be saved with those queries. Now, what if we have a huge table and we do not want any overhead when we are trying to save the data. If I'm just trying to insert two records, I just want to create a query with those two records only. So this type of scenarios occurs and this type of requirements also occur. So for that GPA is providing the dynamic update and dynamic insert. So for that, what we can do is within the entity class, whatever is defined here, I just have to add dynamic 
insert this will be used when using the insert queries so what will happen now is it won't create a single query at the time of application startup but it will create a query every time when we call the save method so whenever we call the save method it will check what are the fields available and what are the fields that needs to be changed so for those fields only whatever needs to be changed or needs to be added for that the queries will be created on the fly and those queries will be executed so I'll just add dynamic update as well. So these are the two annotations being used to add the dynamic insert and dynamic update. I'll just restart my application here. And now here you can see that the application is started again. Now what I will do is I'll again go to the postman and I will just add another name that is Shivam Kumar Shivam at gmail.com. Now you can see that I'm passing department as null again. So this time what should happen is it should create a query dynamically based on the data that I'm providing. So if the department is null, what it should do is it should check the department is null. So I do not need to save the department. So it should generate the query with first name, last name, email and ID only. So I'll just click on send. The data is created. If I go back to the student service and here you can see that this is the hibernate insert query and it is just email first name last name and id there is no department added to it this will happen also for the update statement whenever you are using the update as well okay so this is what dynamic insert and dynamic update is this is when you should use it so the advantages of using dynamic insert and dynamic update is whenever you have a huge table and you want to create those queries based on the data that you provide at that time you can use this dynamic insert and dynamic update if you have hundreds of columns and you're just passing 10 or 15 columns then it will not create a query with all the 100 columns it will just create a query with those only 10 or 15 that you have provided that is the advantages of using dynamic insert and dynamic update. It will also help you to achieve the audit trail as well. So whenever you are trying to audit everything in the database at that time when you are just trying to update only those fields which you want to change, this particular thing will be helpful. Now everything will come with a disadvantage as well. So every time using the dynamic insert and dynamic update is not recommended because what will happen is for your general application, for your standard application, you have the entities and for all those entities you have sufficient amount of fields not that much more as well and not that much less as well average 10 to 15 fields are there for your table for your entities and if you are trying to insert those data using the save operation what it will do is it will just have the insert or update statement cached into the memory whenever the application starts and the same will be used so there will be no overhead for creating the queries it will be just overhead for any particular fields that are not needed but th those will be also added so at that time the performance will be there but when you have a huge table at that time using this will add the performance so it has both advantages and disadvantages so choose wisely when to use dynamic update and dynamic insert based on your requirements it will not always improve the performance of your application so this is all about the dynamic insert and dynamic update that is all i wanted to share with you guys so if you like this video give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos you can also click on join button to join my channel and support me i will see you in the next video till then happy coding bye bye